Hello everyone and welcome back to another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create this zoom transition in Resolve. Today's video tutorial will be rated 2 out of 5 on the difficulty scale. It is a beginner tutorial, but I will have expected you to have used Resolve before and to know the very basics. The first step is to go ahead and find the point of the first clip where you want to cut, where you want the transition to cut from the first to the second clip. Let's say it's about here for me. I'm going to grab the ripple edit mode here, and I'm just going to trim it down here and go back to the normal selection tool. Now I'm going to decide how long I want the transition to be. You can have your transition as one second, one and a half seconds, two seconds even, and I think that's what we're going to do today, two second tra long transition, just to show you how it works. Because we have a two second long transition, we're going to go one second backwards to the start of our transition, because this here will be the middle of our transition, this is the cut. And so we want to go one second backwards to the start of our transition. If you had a one second long transition and you're in a 24 frame per second timeline, you might want to only go to 12 frames. To do that, just click off your clips, make sure you haven't selected anything, and then just type into your keyboard minus 100 if you're doing one second. And you can see the number appearing there as you type. This will convert it into a time code for us. So from left to right, or from right to left, sorry, we have zero, zero frames and we have one second. So just hit enter that'll push us back minus one second like so. And just go to the blade edit tool and just cut it there. And now we need to make sure we go back to the selection tool, click off our clips, and because our whole transition is two seconds long and we wanna go from the beginning to the end of it, we want to go plus 200 or plus two seconds. And that will get us to the end of our transition where we can cut the clip with the blade tool like so. Okay, so now we have our two clips side by side like this and together they form the part of our clip where we want the transition to appear. What you could do is you can just put this into a fusion clip if you want. However, this will make sure that you have only one media in and to mess around with the scale and everything, it'll be a bit strange because you'll have to jump it back and forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate them so that when we put them into fusion, they're going to come in as two separate clips. To do this, just drag the first one onto the second video layer, and then just extend the bottom one out like so. Now, highlight them all, as you can see, and click right click, new fusion clip. That will blend them all into one clip, and it'll put that into something we can edit in fusion. Let's go ahead and select our clip, and then go into fusion. Ooh, go into fusion like so. And now we're going to edit this clip in fusion. I have a tutorial on the basics of Fusion if you're really stuck, but I will, of course, this is a beginner tutorial, so I'll try to explain everything with nodes as best I can. I'm going to use the middle mouse wheel and just click down on it to move around in my timeline. I'm going to hit control scroll to zoom in if I want. We can see we've got four of these, they're called nodes. A node can be a corrector, it can be a merge node which merges two clips, or it can be a media. At the moment we have two media in clips, we've got two video clips, our first and our second clip. We've got a merge node which puts them together into one outline, as one line as you can see. And this path connects to our media out, which is basically our final output. You can also see we have two bubbles right here, we've got a left view and a right view. If you click one on any of these, it'll show up on the left view. And if you click two on any of these, such as our media out is currently showing in the right view, so if you select two, we can make our media in one show in the right view but it's always best probably to have our media out showing in the right view. And you can use our media left view to show whichever one you want. So we have our merge node here, and this is merging the two clips side by side. As you can see, we have our, everything is in place properly. So at the beginning, we have our first clip. And at the end, we have our second clip. And this works because we have everything going into the right slots in the merge node. However, you might not have it that way. Let's check out what our media in one is by clicking one on the keyboard after we've selected it. And that will put it into the left viewer for us. You can see if we follow this along and we hover over this here, that the yellow bit here in the merge node is the background. And this is what we want because we have this as the background longer clip and we want this one to be put on top. And so what you can do even is you can rearrange them like this to make it easier to think about if you have the background here and this put on top. If they're the wrong way, what you can do is just drag the nodes out like so, and then you can connect them the other way around. 
so that you can have this one over here if you want. However, ours was the right way around, so I'm quickly just going to reconnect these back the right way around, and we should be good to go. Okay, so now that we've got our two medias separately, we're going to add two what they call transform nodes so that we can adjust the scale, position, rotation, all of that kind of stuff to do with the clip. Let's start with our media in two. We're going to go and drag this up a bit, and with this clip selected, just go over here and click on transform. That will add a transform node between these two clips before the media goes into the merge node. If we added the transform after the merge node, it would adjust both of these clips together. But with just the transform on this node, we're just selecting this clip. So let's go ahead and adjust the transform. If we look at the size here, we can zoom in or zoom out of the clip. Let's go to the point in time where the clip first appears. You can use the left and right keys on your keyboard to go to the exact frame. At this frame, we want the clip to be pretty zoomed out. We're going to go and set the scale to be 0.5, like so. This is looking okay, except if, of course that we can see all of this stuff around the border. So what we're going to go and do is go to edges and just select them to be mirror. You can also choose any kind of other edges if you want to have a different effect, but I think the mirror works best for almost everything. Then we're going to click on this button right here. This will turn on animation and set a keyframe for us at this frame. That means that the computer knows that at this frame, the scale or the size should remain at this value. Now let's go to the end clip, the end frame, sorry, and click on the little dot here to reset the size to one. Now, if we go between the two keyframes, you can see that the scale is animating itself and it's zooming from out to in. Let's do a similar thing here. Let's drag this out at a transform node and let's go to the frame where it starts. Let's keyframe the size at one. Then let's go to the frame where it ends, this frame right here, and let's say the size should be two. Now between those keyframes, you can see that the size zooms in. Let's go ahead and save this, and we're just gonna go even back to the edit page just to see what this looks like. Let's go here and let's just wait for the bar to render it all. But once that whole bar is blue, it should be rendered and we should be able to play it back nice and easily. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see it's quite choppy and it doesn't really look the best. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the interpolation between these keyframes to make it smoother. Let's go back into Fusion. And in the Transform, in fact, you don't even need to select the Transform, just go up into this spline here. The spline editor adjusts as well the interpolation between keyframes. We've got two things we can adjust here, the size of both of our transform nodes. Let's go to this one, zoom in, with control scroll, and what you can do is just highlight these keyframes, and we've got two handles here. What we want is, well, this is the second clip, so we want it to zoom in really fast in the beginning, and at the end, we want it to be really smooth. This gives us a smooth curve. On the x-axis we have time and on the y value we have the actual value of size. And you can see that at the beginning it goes really fast and the end it's more smooth. Let's go to the first one now. Let's highlight these keyframes. And we want to do the opposite here. We want to have it smooth at the beginning because it's the first clip. And at the end we want to have it harsh. So let's go ahead and save this. And just a last thing before we finish off, we want to go ahead and in the settings here for each of these transforms, make sure you select a motion blur. And that will give us some nice natural looking motion blur that goes along with our scale. So just go ahead and select that. And as you can see, at frames like this, we get quite a bit of motion blur, which makes it look a bit more realistic. Now we've got our smoothed over keyframes and we've got that motion blur as well. Make sure the bar is blue and let's play it back in the editor and you can see we have a nice zoom transition now. So that's how to create the zoom transition in DaVinci Resolve. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then you can subscribe to my channel Shiny Films for more video editing tutorials in programs like Resolve and other free video editors and all kinds of things as well. If you enjoyed this specific video, then of course you can like it and it'll help other people find it. But either way, I will see you in the next video. Stay shiny.